This morning I heard a case from a very fun couple. Did you know that videographers have among the highest divorce rates in the country? The issues that come with that job are some of the biggest reasons the couple came to divorce court today. Divorce court is now in session. Mrs. Jackie Durham and Mr. Nigel Durham, the two of you have been married for uh, 13 years, together 14 years. You don't want to be married anymore, although I understand you'd like to hang in there a little longer, and uh, you're finished, I'm I ready. believe. Mrs. Durham, you, you said in your papers that your wedding was so awful you should have known that the marriage wasn't going to work. Tell me what went wrong on your wedding day. Everything. I was three hours late for the wedding. Well, the, the entire wedding party was three hours late. Um, there was a ceremony going on before hour that ran over, and we couldn't get in to start until three hours later. Um, I had this beautiful ball gown, wedding gown that I bought. Had it on layaway for a year. It was beautiful. I waved brown makeup from the top of the gown all the way to the very bottom and hit the floor, and it was a brown streak down the whole gown. I cried, and I was actually going to call it off at that point because there was so much going wrong. Um, but, you know, followed family's advice, and I continued, um, went, showed up to the venue, and that's when I saw his hair. Um, he showed up to the wedding with uh, curly puffs in his hair. And um, I didn't know how to take that. I think I was more taken by that than I was the whole wedding. Well, now, how old, now, 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 how old was he when you married him? He was 22. I was he, 28. He was 22 and 28, and he came in, he came in with curly puffs. Yes. Everybody kept coming to me and was like, you know, have you seen Nigel's hair? And I was like, no, I hadn't seen him because we didn't see each other that day. And I said, no. And more and more people kept coming to me, have you seen Nigel's hair? And I was like, well, what's wrong? And they started to freak me out, like, what's wrong? Did he cut his hair? Like, what's going on? And they was like, no, girl, it's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's fine. And uh, as my father, you know, grabbed my hand and we started to walk down the aisle, and I'm looking at the end of the aisle, and I'm, all I could stare at was... His curly puffs. Two big... Did, didn't anybody did, didn't anybody talk to you before the ceremony and make a few suggestions about how you should appear? There wasn't no Your puffs. Honor, there wasn't it wasn't no was, afro puffs. It was braided puffs. into two <laughs> bunny ear puffs. <laughs> two two buns on the side of your head. Yeah. Yes. I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, my brother actually uh, finished my vows for me. How come? Um, yeah, he finished. But, but, but why? No, nah, my I, vows, my my vows. Like he, he he said I do and all that. He whatever. said I do. When the pastor for you? Yeah. Yes. Well, what were you doing? I mean, <laughs> he just jumped in. Yeah, and he said just jumped it. in. I mean, well, you didn't know what to say. <laughs> no, I know I know exactly what to say. I, I I was good. I mean, but, but what was the problem? I don't I don't know. I guess it wasn't going quick enough for him. <laughs> So he Everybody wanted to wrap, waited. He, he wanted a long to wrap time. it up. But what, was he taking too long to say I do? Was he thinking about it? What? No, he was on time. I just think my brother wanted to move it right along. Let's go, let's go. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were already three hours late. Right. You wanted to get, in, yeah. let's get through these vows, get down, right. and get down to the party. Right, let's go. So right. we could all do the electric slide. I got and it. So, uh, yeah, exactly. When it came to exchanging the rings. So you see how things kind of rushed. Rush you know through. I got yeah. you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's that's a yeah, yeah. rushing. That's kind of the problem. Like we kind of rush things. And when it came down to the rings, I was trying to give him his ring, but my matron of honor got the ring stuck on her finger. Um, and no one ate at our wedding because, because the venue was three hours late. The caterer couldn't cook. There was no food. There was no food. No food. So they waited three hours, three waited hours. for a slow I do, and still didn't get to eat. <laughs> Not one bite of food. That's no. unfortunate. Stuff was raw. Stuff was raw, and they dropped it all off at our home. Raw, uncooked food. I understand that you guys were having trouble even before you got married, because once you announced your marriage, an ex popped up and started some nonsense. Why don't you tell me what happened there? You're talking about the, um... The, the fake pregnancy scare. Yeah, the fake pregnancy scare. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Um, my ex, like, we was, we was rocky. We just wasn't on the same page and whatnot, and 
Um, I wanted to move on and whatnot, and I guess I just didn't do it in the proper manner. So by me not doing it in the proper manner, things got screwed up, and she ended up um, calling the phone that I had in connection with Jackie. Do you, do you remember the phone call? Now I do. I yeah, tell me about the phone do. call. The phone call is, this young lady called my phone. I'm at work. I'm at work doing my job. I get a phone call on my cell phone, my daytime minutes, and she's telling me, well, I might be pregnant by Nigel. And I'm like, I don't understand what might be means. Either you are or you aren't. Well, she said, well, well I am. I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and send your baby daddy back to you. I don't need this drum. Yeah. Did you put him out? I sure did. Did, you put, did she put you out? And, and what, did you go back way. to the ex, or did you have somewhere else to land? No, I didn't. I didn't go to the ex. Um, it just so happens that my cousin stayed in the same apartment complex. So when she put all my stuff out, threw all my CDs and everything out, and my clothes or whatever, and had the whole neighborhood, you know, have, you know, looking at me on spotlight, I could. Ju I just had to walk over to my cousin's place and kind of duck away from there for a minute. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were looking at him or they were looking at the bonfire I had started with his stuff. You lit his stuff on fire? Yeah. Now, Mrs. Durham, you are six years older than this man. You should have known better than to light his clothes on fire. Yes, ma'am. I should have, but I was really, really angry. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry. I really was. It was, he used my car to go and see this woman. He called her from my cell phone. And that's how she got my number to call me back. And I just, I thought it was just... Made you look crazy. Yes. I, I understand. Well, in the beginning of the marriage, you know, he did cheat on me. And uh, I found out that he had a two-year affair within those three years. Mr. Durham? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mrs. Durham, I understand that your husband is a videographer. Yes. Uh, th does he do music videos and stuff like that? He, or? Does, he does music videos. He also do, uh, does commercials. And uh -huh. He also records events and parties and stuff like that. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. My understanding is you have some concerns about scantily clad women that he works with. Tell yes. me about that. He does a lot of rap videos, a lot of strip mm -hmm. club promotions and stuff like that. So he's around these type of women all day every day and it could be a bit overwhelming when you see stuff being sent to him pictures and stuff like that being sent to him online and what are they auditioning for him or yeah or they just want to be in his life some way i don't know a lot of these women send stuff that doesn't have anything to do with business but they just sending it yes are women sending you what, what that got to do with me though i mean <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't control what gets sent to me. You, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, so it right. just comes along with the territory. Tori. So, but you don't engage in conversation. You don't comment back. No, you don't if, say, if "Wow, baby, you look business, good." If it's not about None business, of that. then then it's it's deleted. Has he ever done anything that caused you concern about his response to these things? Has he ever done anything to make you feel like he's been unfaithful? Well, in the beginning of the marriage. You know, he did cheat on me. We were we were about three years into the marriage, and uh, I found out that he had a two-year affair within those three years. Mr. Durham, do you mean to tell me, out of the first three years of marriage with this woman, you were having an affair with somebody else for two of them? Yeah, it didn't have nothing to do with business, nothing like that. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> the business topic. We're just talking about you cheating. Yeah, like, I mean, that had more so to do with the fact that I guess I felt like I hadn't really got too much out of my system, you know what I'm saying? Like... You were too young to settle down and you needed to sow some wild oats. Yeah, I guess so. You guess? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was something, it was a, it was a different experience. It was something like a, a, a different type, you know? Let me ask you this. 
Why did you get married at 22? Because it is young. I mean... Now I know why his brother said I do for him. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> With it. I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm not disparaging you, but it takes a moment to get from uh, here to there. For no, you. I mean, I mean, pressure could be. A, I mean, yeah, Honor, I what didn't kind of pressure him. were you under? To, I mean, to keep it real, like. I appreciate it. I, I, I would, I was actually asked when I was going to propose. Who asked you that? We was laying in bed, like you know, what I'm saying, when, when are you, when are you going to propose to me? I think he had me confused so with the other woman. So were you two living? Were you nah, two living that's, together that's, when that's, that happened? Yeah. Your Honor, I never asked him because I wasn't prepared myself. I was 28 years old. I had my own money, my own job, my own home, car, and I had four children. I wasn't trying to marry this man at 22 years old. I was 28 years old. I know that you don't have it out of your system. Mm -hmm. But when he asked me, I was in love with him. You know, when he asked me, I said mm -hmm. yes. But he asked me. I didn't come to him. I just told him, I'm not going to waste my time. If we're not going anywhere, Where? let mm. me That's know. That's not exactly how the words work. Okay. Let, let, let's talk about this for a minute. I'm feeling like she don't, she can't put herself in my shoes. She can't respect what I do for us. Sometimes I feel like, the, you know, the kids get more respect than me sometimes. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mrs. Durham, you say that you wait on Mr. Durham hand and foot like he's an extra kid and not a husband. Yes. Why don't you explain that to me? I'm a country southern girl. My mm -hmm. mother been married for 45 years. My grandparents, 66 years. And I've always seen them take care of the men. You clean, you cook, you bring them their plate. You do what you have to do as a woman to keep the household together. You support the man. That's what you do. I did that. And you know, taking that's care of, hang, taking hang on, care hang on, hang on, is, is different from being a dictator. What does he bring to the table in the marriage? He does provide money. Economically? He, yes. Is it a significant contribution economically? Yes. yes. Okay, but Hardcore. otherwise, all the domestic duties are on you. Is that what you're saying? All of them, everything. Okay, what is your response to that, Mr. Durham? That's ridiculous. I mean, if if she knew what I went through on a, on a day to day basis, you know, what I'm saying as far as my work and whatnot, because I'm not doing the video thing 100 percent like I want to be doing it. I still got to do other stuff. I still got to do warehouse strenuous type stuff uh -huh, that I don't want to uh -huh. be doing, but I'm uh -huh. doing. You know what I'm saying? I still gotta do that kind of stuff. And she don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? When, when I'm, I'm aching from head to toe and all that kind of stuff, I mean, I, I may slack up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I try to be that team. Well, you work as well, do you not? Yes, ma'am, I do. And not only that, he feels like... It's Jesse nowhere compared to what kind of stuff that I do. And that's what he does. He discredits what I do. That's what he does. I discredit. Just because, just because he works. Physical know, labor right, as right. opposed to... Intellectual labor. Right. He feels like I don't do anything or what I do is not as... As strenuous. As strenuous as what he does or he doesn't give me the she credit. She's in the AC. I'm in a That's hot he... warehouse, you know what I'm saying, sweating, like totally drenched and whatnot. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Mr. Durham. You mentioned that she's a dictator. In what way is she a dictator? All kind of ways from, from just day-to-day -day stuff, like, you know, picking up my stuff. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, some, a lot of times she j jumps the gun. I'm going to get my stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, but uh, it's going to take me some time and everything because I ain't going to move. I, I just came from a hard shift, you know what I'm saying? You can't expect me to be this prompt and everything with, with everything. I'm going to get to it. Just give me some time. And even with my business and whatnot, like, if she hear me on the phone trying to negotiate something, sometimes she'll jump into my conversation like I don't know how to handle my business. All kind of stuff, you know. You're what I'm really frustrated, aren't you, Mr. Durham? I mean, you, you came out here kind of calm, but I think I think we've tapped into some real frustration on your part. What are you feeling? Do you do you feel like an equal partner, or are you feeling? I'm feeling like she don't, she can't put herself in my shoes. Like I don't want her to be in my shoes, but she can't respect where I'm coming from. Like she can't respect what I do. She can't respect how hard I go for us. Do you think and it's because you're younger than she is? Probably. 
But then I don't know, because sometimes I feel like, the, you know, the kids get more respect than me sometimes. G give me an example of that. Like, if, if I feel passionate about something, like, if I, if I say something, it's like, I'm wrong, like, I need to tone my voice down, like, you, you know what I'm saying? You could talk over me, but I need to tone my voice down, like, you know, it, I don't do, you, do, you, do you hear his frustration over I there? I do. Do you think you understand where it stems from? I actually don't because, like he, st like he stated, he feels like just because I'm at home, when I do the wash, the cleaning, folding, ironing, hanging up clothes, vacuuming, uh, in the AC, dishes, at in, your own just comfortable Just because pace. I'm at home, what I do is not hard, strenuous work because I'm at home. Mm -hmm. You know. And when he comes in from work and he throws his clothes at the door after I just got done cleaning, mm -hmm. he'll drop his Do stuff. Do you work outside the home? Me? No. Nope. Oh, well, now, Ms. Dora. But I do. How much of I, a Southern woman could you be <laughs> if you at home all day long cooking and cleaning and you're going to get mad because this man came in from a warehouse and put his clothes on the floor? But, Your Honor, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of care to me. She can sit down whenever she wants to. She can take it. She, she I can, understand. You know. I understand. In divorce court, couples tell me everything about their relationships. Want to share your experience? Join the conversation on our Twitter page at Divorce Court. On Facebook, check out other fans and their intimate issues. You know everybody has something to say about love. What's on your mind? I think what we have going on here is a guy who was young, living with a woman, wasn't quite ready to get married, but felt like he couldn't continue to stay unless he did. Am I right? No, that's more so what I said earlier about just being, like, feeling obligated, like. That's what obligated is. You feel like you had to. Yeah. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand how you felt about some guy living in your house and you asking me, well, where is this going? Because you just can't live up in here and do anything. Here's where you made your mistake. Don't let no guy just move in with you. Right. Did, you know what I mean? That, that, it's a mistake so many women make. Right. You know? If somebody isn't coming to you, bringing something to the table, don't let him just come in and lay his head there because he doesn't have anywhere else to go. That's not your problem. You didn't create him. You got four kids. You got things to do. And then you don't have to wonder, well, where is this going? And, and, and possibly rush a guy who isn't ready because he's, he's laying up in your house. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Just Mr. Durham, I think she's doing what a lot of women do that, that men find frustrating. I do it to my husband. I call it expediting. <laughs> I can get out about 27 sentences before he can get out three words. Oh, oh. That's just because that's how I roll. Yeah, that's it. And women talk a lot. We do. And we take care of a lot of divergent business all over the place, all at the same time. And I believe that sometimes in an effort to assist, we just get on y'all's nerves. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, that pressure, like, like I said, being a dictator, being I got an it. iron fist. I think, I think divorce is a good thing for y'all. I hate saying that to people, but I think it is, because I think he isn't at all ready. He isn't at all committed to it. You know what I mean? It's been a long time. It's been a while. You go your separate ways. Maybe one day you come back together and get it together. But, but right now, I think it's a good idea, and uh, I wish you both the best. This matter is adjourned. Sometimes I think the worst thing people do is not make a bad decision, but fail to make any decision at all. If you just kind of roll into something, you roll in to let somebody live with you, then you roll into we'll get married because we don't know what else to do, you kind of just roll into a long legacy of trouble. Decide to decide.